Hello, good morning. Uh, we, it's great to have you with us here. We hope your bank holiday weekend went very well and welcome along to Ireland AM. Um. So there's people stopping after last night, raining all over the country it was, but fair place to ease you back into the short week. We have a national treasure coming up on the show. We do indeed, with a career spanning no less than four decades. Daniel O'Donnell is the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, the night of the Daniels. He's going to be here to chat new music. You saw the video, right, the other night, the night of the Daniels, it's so good. Uh, joining TikTok and starring in a new comedy film. Love it's it. absolutely class. <laughs> also in studio this morning is Irish actress Rebecca O'Mara, who is starring the likes of Red Rock, Smother and Line of Duty. She's going to tell us about heading to Hollywood to star opposite Kevin Bacon. Now, Alan is here, but the question is, <laughs> did he open his door to trick-or-treaters or head down the Chinese so that he wouldn't have to see anyone? I was at home last night and we were welcoming all the poor drenched children. Oh, it was wet. It was wet. It was wet. Yeah. It was wet. Yeah. Kind of no, a bit of a damp squib, but actually we got a window where we got out and didn't get too wet. But yeah, yeah it kind of was sad. That it, it was such yeah. A... yeah, there was a lot of, like, I saw a lot of parents going around with going, going Umbrellas. as pegs. But they were going as peg stairs, it felt like, because <laughs> it was like, I was going to throw the shawl around and, me. And recycling a lot of the children going around. What were they collecting in? Pillowcases. Oh, Old school! Yeah! Perfect. Very so much so now. One. So recycling, get, get the pillowcase washed again so you're not using our plastic bags. Very clever. We missed the memo on Very that one. clever. <laughs> now, uh, to save you looking like a withered prune this winter, the Skin Nerd, a.k.a. Jennifer Rock, will be here with a selection of must-have products for hydrating your skin. So looking forward to that. Now, Derek is in Dublin City Centre this morning and it's Movember season once again, Derek. Yes, Sal, Movember season well and truly upon us. We're going to be catching up with some frontline row bros a little bit later on this morning, including a fireman and a guard. And we're going to have a shave down at Dahl later on this morning. In terms of weather, it's a damp and breezy start. More rain with a risk of hail out there this Tuesday. But as you mentioned, how damp, how wet was it last night for the poor little kids out and about? And Tommy, I loved your costume. Prince Charming. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Thank you. A birthday birthday pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Made the effort, of course. So tell me, are you going to get a moustache shaved into that beard? Are you going to shave yeah. it all off? Oh, no. Don't, don't even go there. Don't even go there. I look about 17. <laughs> Come on. I look like a baba now if I shave my beard off. Oh, oh you okay. have to get it done. I do you know what? Do a poll. Well, we'll do a poll. I'll take one for the team and I'll, I'll let you my... I'll, no, I'll let my... my I'll let my moustache grow for November. How about that? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you love right, it. Right, it's time to get the news over to you, Cleona Russell. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Parents and guardians are to receive a double child benefit payment from today. It will be given to around 693,000 families for 1.2 million children. The lump sum payment was announced in the budget to help with spiralling costs. Meanwhile, the first €200 Euro electricity credit will appear on energy bills from today. It's one of three government payments to households to help with the cost of living crisis. It comes as Gas Networks Ireland forecasts no disruption to services this winter, as it says it has enough supply to meet demand. With no end in sight to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, fears have been growing here at home and across Europe about the impact on gas supply and energy security in the coming months. However, today Gas Networks Ireland has moved to reassure those worried about disruption to supply this winter. In its latest outlook, it says there's both enough gas supply sources and network capacity to meet the anticipated demand projections over the coming winter period, including in the case of an extremely cold day that could only occur once every 50 years. It comes as the first of three €200 Euro energy credits announced in the budget kick in from today. The money will be paid directly to over 2.2 million domestic electricity accounts, including both bill pay and pay-as-you-go customers. Depending on a household's energy supplier and billing cycle, the credit will appear on a bill over November and into December. They're worried about the energy crisis, so obviously that's to do with the cost of living. So people are changing what they eat, how they travel, how they're interacting with the health service. The second and third payments are due to be paid in January and March next year. Paul Quinn, Virgin Media News. 
A woman in her 30s has died after a crash in Limerick yesterday afternoon. It happened on the N21 south of Rathkeel shortly after 4.15. The woman, who is a driver of one of the cars, was taken to University Hospital Limerick, where she has since been pronounced dead. Three passengers in her car, a man in his 30s and two young children, were also taken to hospital, as was the driver of the second car, a man in his 20s. Their conditions are not thought to be life-threatening. In Brazil, Bolsonaro supporters have blocked roads causing major delays and disruption in at least 19 states across the country. These drone shots show the supporters blocking a main highway in Sao Paulo. They're protesting the presidential election result that saw Bolsonaro lose to Lula da Silva. So far, Bolsonaro has neither conceded defeat nor challenged the result of the election. Frankly, I don't think he's going to concede. Um, he won't challenge the elections either, so he's not going to mount, as we saw, for example, in the U.S., an entire campaign of fraudulent elections or anything like that. He doesn't have the space to do it. Authorities have already manifested themselves, speaking of the legitimacy of the elections, and his allies also don't want him to do this because many of them just got re-elected. So he's not going to contest the elections, but he's not going to concede either, which is going to make the transition very difficult. EY is creating 900 jobs across the island of Ireland. The company says 550 of the positions will be for experienced staff, while 350 will be graduate roles at its offices in Dublin, Belfast, Cork, Galway, Limerick and Waterford. EY has reported record growth for its business in Ireland, with revenues up by 26% to 536 million to the end of June. The 900 new jobs will bring its total Total workforce here to over 5,000. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, show pinch, punch. It's a brand new month, first of November upon us. We're coming to you live here from the heart of the city centre as we kick off November a little bit later on. We're going to be catching up with some frontline workers into the next hour. So that's all to come right across this morning. Now, let's take an opening look at weather together with Martin Rigney on cameras. And it certainly is quite a damp, quite a breezy start following that uh, overnight heavy rain out there for those trick-or-treaters uh, last night. But that's where we are seeing shares now across central Donegal into parts of Clare through the southwest of uh, Cork and Kerry, especially there through Castletown Bear into uh, West Cork at the moment. But as we're just about holding drier now in those fresh and locally strong uh, southwest to westerly winds. Now, right across today, in fact, we will see a system develop through parts of the west, and that will track mainly lodged in across the western half of the country out there today. Elsewhere, uh, we will see some nice uh, November sunshine out there uh, for the first day indeed of a brand new month but bearing in mind where that rain does fall it could carry a risk of hail out there today and those winds very strong very pacey even gusty at times with top temps slightly cooler too back to 10 to 13 degrees finally then tonight it's going to be quite a chilly start it will be dry for a time but once again more rain working its way in across the island and that will track uh, in a northerly direction so a lot of us really and uh, waking up to a wet start into wednesday morning with overnight lows back to 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how we shape it up here from the heart of the capital at the moment. We catch you back live at 7.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Now coming up, we're going to be taking a look at the stories making this morning's papers. Don't go away. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We're going to start with the Irish Times. It's headline, RT accused Taoiseach over licence fee. The chairwoman of RT accused the Taoiseach and his government of deliberately undermining the broadcaster by not committing to reforming the TV licence system. Four in ten Garda stations see crime rise despite lockdown. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. Four out of every ten Garda stations recorded an increase in crime last year compared to pre-COVID levels despite being subject to lockdown restrictions for large parts of the year.
The Examiner's front page, Martin rebukes Green and Fine Gael bad politics. Taoiseach Micheál Martin has accused his coalition partners, Fine Gael and the Greens, of engaging in bad politics by targeting Fianna Fáil ministers for attack. The Star's front page, the monks no dope. Jerry the Monk Hutch made a dramatic spectacle in a prison yard in an apparent effort to stop drugs from coming in. The Mirror's front page, Tyson US ban over Kinnahan Link. Boxer Tyson Fury and his brother Tommy have admitted they are banned from the US over the heavyweights links to Irish mob boss Daniel Kinnahan. Two years jail for excessive turf burning is the top story in the Daily Mail. People who burn excessive amounts of turf could face two years in jail under new regulations that came into force yesterday. The Herald's front page, remarkable bravery, inspirational cervical cancer campaigner Lindsay laid to rest. And finally, the sun leads with that same story. Lindsay, we are all so proud of you. And I think when we all woke up on Thursday morning and realised that Lindsay Bennett had passed away at 34, we were all incredibly shocked at that. And yesterday, the funeral took place of cervical check campaigner Lindsay Bennett. Yeah, earlier this year, Lindsay, she told us about how being open and honest with her daughters about her illness. And it's... Um, so sad to look back on, but she was a great friend she of this amazing. show. Last, when you're here, you had them both with you as well. Yeah. And if, for Haley, who's only eight, you. you know, are you very honest with her about it? Because, yeah. you know, that morning she knew exactly what was going on, but it must be so difficult. Yeah, I've know, been so honest. I've been so honest with them from the start, but in the most gentle way that I could. I turned around and I said, look, I, nobody knows when they have to go to heaven. And I said, and I can't promise you how long I'm going to be here. I said, the only thing is, that I can promise you is that I am trying my best. I said, that's why Mammy's now going to Germany, like she went to Mexico. And I said, look, I said, I've already got um, lots of extra time that wasn't expected. And she was like, OK, OK. And she was happy with that, but she's still sleeping in my bed at night now. It's just heartbreaking, isn't it? And listen, our condolences, everybody here in Ireland AM goes out to Lindsay's family, of course, to Zoe and to Hayley in particular as well. It's just it's something you just couldn't ever... Think Absolutely, of. and the fact that she used her time, the 23 months that she got since her diagnosis, to try to push forward and look for justice and to secure her children's future um, in, in getting a settlement uh, in the High Court. Uh, so, Lindsay, we're thinking of absolutely. you and uh, we hope you're at peace now. Just the age of 34. Yeah, desperate. it's absolutely awful and she shouldn't be gone. Uh, we're going to move on now and joining us uh, to talk about stories making the front pages is News Talk's Anton Savage. Anton, it's lovely right. to have you here. We're going to talk about something completely different. And this is the story in the front page of the Irish Independent that four in ten guard the station have seen a crime rise since 2019, even though we had the lockdown in between all of that. That's the, the weird bit about this, because you would have thought that given lockdown, you're going to see a significant drop in crime because it's much harder to rob somebody's house if you're not allowed to leave your own. Mm -hmm. So these figures are looking at the year, comparing the year pre-pandemic, so the last of the year of normality, with the last year of the pandemic. So while there was still a lockdown, and what it's revealing is that in four out of 10 Garda stations, they saw a rise in the level of crime even though there was a period of lockdown. So that suggests that as we look a year ahead, we might see an even greater increase as things go back to criminal normality. The types of crime are interesting. It varies depending on the location, but the most common two, number one on the list is probably slightly surprising because it is a white collar crime, it's fraud. So fraud is the single largest increase in crime in the Garda stations that reported it. And it's the kind of fraud where somebody knocks on your door and says, ah, oh, you need a bit of work done on the roof and takes deposit and never comes back and that kind of thing. But fraud, number one. And number two, the most common crime in the country is on the increase in these Garda stations. And that, of course, is theft. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Theft, burglary, assault and threats. And this is the thing. When we're seeing less guards on the street, we're seeing how pressed they are for numbers and how difficult it is to be a guard at the minute because where's the respect nowadays? And you were just saying that because we've seen a rise even in that lockdown period, it's a bit of a worry where it's going to go in the next year and coming years if they don't get the support that they need. Yeah, and as with all things, there are the two sides of it. There are, there's the, the one side that says, 
what is it that incentivizes the people who are doing these crimes to do them? So is there a way to divert them out of criminality? And that tends to have big uh, links to poverty. It has links to intergenerational yeah. criminality. It has links to education. And then on the other side, there is what's the available punishment. And that's, I think, an easier thing to talk about than it is to actually solve. Because you say, oh, you know, give them severe sentences. Well, so what? Like you do three or four months for a burglary, you're out at the end. Yeah. What, what does yeah. it take off you? If you don't have the other set of opportunities in your life that you're losing. So it's a difficult problem. And as you say, with a lot of guards uh, leaving the force and with morale reported to be relatively low on the front lines, difficult time to be a guard. Yeah, and I, it's it's interesting that you say that, that it has to go in conjunction because you always hear, lock them up. But that's not doing anything. If you've, if there's... If it's like, okay, I'm going away for three months and I'm coming out to this anyway, who cares? Like, we saw everything that was happening in Cherry Orchard with the ramming of Garda mm-hmm. cars and uh, they just didn't care. It, I mean, it st- st- still frightens me to think that most of the guards on the street aren't don't have the licences that they can turn the lights on yeah. and that they can go through traffic lights. So if you're in an area like that and you need urgent response... The, the, there's a huge likelihood that there's going to be no support close and but, can't, they have to wait in traffic before mm. they can even get to help you. And there's also then the, the what is the point of a big dramatic guard action if the guard knows it's not going to cause any yeah. results. So I was on, on Saturday, I think it was, I was standing at a, a Lewis stop that's outside a guard station and a bunch of kids came around the corner wheeling one of those um, stacking, shelf stacking trolleys that you use in supermarkets. Yeah. yeah clearly nicked it. Like, just, they've nicked that. And they wheel it past a guard who's standing outside the front of the guard of the station, and the guard says, where'd you get that? To which the answer is, get stuffed. And they then disperse, leave the oak line in the road. But you're looking at the guard thinking, what was he to do? Like, if he yeah. dashes into the middle of them, grabs one of them, takes him in, he'll be released under the juvenile liaison officer scheme. There'll be no prosecution. Yeah. He'll waste an entire day on paperwork, so... And leaves. that's what they said, yeah, that the guards are, unfortunately, it's they're under more scrutiny if they make a small mistake as opposed to actually trying to stop what's going on. Yeah, but unfortunately, that just goes to it. There's literally, there's no respect. Yeah. So it does, like, there is no respect. And I don't think that this is, um, this is in one section of society. Like, it's broad strokes. And as you say, guard can't do anything. And it's a day or two of paperwork where they're not actually doing anything else. 0896 111 We'd love yeah. to hear from you today. Have you seen a rise? That, Have the... you seen a rise in your local area as well? Is this something that really concerns mm-hmm. you? And particularly around rural area when you're seeing theft and burglary. And we, should, we shouldn't really forget the white-collar crime as well because when you look at the prosecutability of white-collar crime in Ireland, it's an extremely difficult True. thing to prosecute. And we have seen the outcome of several tribunals where they have said, here are people engaged in what we believe to be reprehensible actions. Mm-hmm. And you look at the list of people named and the list of people prosecuted, one is much bigger than the other. Yeah. So there is an issue on that as well, that we shouldn't just be pointing to those who are involved in blue-collar crime. White-collar is just as significant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, ver- that is, because it. You know, we don't pay attention to it enough. You're dead right uh, about that one. We'd love to hear from you. 0896 111 Now, we're going on to another story, and this is the Thánaiste Leo Varadkar has produced a gorgeous video. Um, this is this is. There's more productions gone into this than Daniel O'Donnell. So I'd say Daniel O'Donnell spent a fortune on his. <laughs> and his so who and knows his what thing. Leo spent? But it's a, discussing the new law to protect employees' tips, uh, their tips essentially, and their service charges because there was uproar. Uh, certain places in Dublin were taking the tips that were given and not giving, not dispersing them to any of the workers Sorry, who worked there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, the, there's two layers I think of frustration that people have with service charges. The first is when you get the bill and it says oh, I have to give you a service charge. Mm-hmm. And you think, I was going to anyway, yeah. but now I'm not going to give you as much as I was because I'm being... Man, you know, yeah. that but once you get past that mandatory service charge, the next thing is, well, okay, if I'm being forced to give it to you, at least it's given to you. And then you realise, no, that there are some restaurants where it says service charge, but service charge just goes in the bill with everything else. So this is legislation to say, if you write on a thing, this is a, quote, service charge, mm. it has to go to the waiters and waitresses. Okay, which is a great thing. It, I, like, I, I love the idea of this. And I feel that if the service isn't good enough, then you don't feel that you have to give the tip, no? See, this is what I love. Because we are meant to, and obviously cost of living has gone absolutely insane. I've worked in the service, I worked in the service industry for years and getting tips was amazing. Mm. I loved it. But you didn't expect it in Ireland because we have, well, certainly when I was growing up, you know, we, we had the, the minimum wage. But now, you, do you feel like you have to give one? Like you have oh, to God, give a yeah. tip in Ireland, oh, yeah, yeah, regardless yeah. of how crap it is. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. You, ha- you have to. Oh yeah, you have to come in at about. Uh, you have to come in at fifteen percent minimum. If you like, you just have to. Yeah. And then anything above that is you've done particularly well. The what if that- you're James Corden though, and the food doesn't? Oh, let's not <laughs> start that again. Let's not go back down that road. The one though that I'm still sketchy on is who we're meant to tip in Ireland. 
Because in, in America, you tip everybody. So yeah. you tip your taxi driver, oh, you tip your bartender, mad. you tip your waiters and waitresses. In Ireland, I'm still sketchy. Are we meant to tip bartenders? Are, are barbers? Exactly. Or do you, do you tip taxi drivers? Well, you definitely... Oh, so you have to... No. Hairdressers, people who do your... Like, I'm just throwing money at people going, thank you. Yeah, are but you? Then, oh, my God. Oh, I tip I, absolutely I know. everyone. It's an awkwardness. When I go to America, you run out of dollar bills, and then how many dollars... Like, what are you yeah. meant to... And so in here, Ireland, I think what's it's the system? Here. In America, you can't insult somebody with money. In Ireland, you can. Mm. I tried to tip a guy who did a fabulous piece of mechanical work for me on a car a while ago. And, like... <gasps> It got tense. It got properly tense. Because he didn't want... No, he was like this, and now you've made it cheap. Do you know, it was like the money's on the nightstand. It had that feel to it. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm just trying to say He's giving you the price that he wants for it. Pay the price, there you go. But why does this not apply in taxis and waitresses and waiters then? Well, like, it does. Well, I don't know. I think taxi drivers might expect a couple... Because now the in apps a restaurant say, restaurant is different because it's about the food. Oh, I think it's, taxis have gone insane. I don't give any tip in taxis anymore. I used to, because I don't cash anymore. Let us so it's know. Just on the app. Uh, it's 0896. <laughs> 0896 triple one triple one. We love to know. Do you do you tip? Tip, tip everyone? Who you tip? How much do you tip? Well, uh, yeah. Hairdressers, yeah. take all my money. Just don't, don't take it all. Take it um, all. Anton Savage from News Talk. Thanks so much for coming in. Cough up the tip. Cough up the tip. <laughs> we'll we give him a cup yeah. of coffee, and he's happy for it. Uh, still to come, we're going to be talking about the twin demic, which is COVID and flu, and whether we should be concerned about it this winter. Morning. Exciting. Plus, it's Movember season again. We're going to be finding out how the yearly event, which raises vital funds for men's health, it does great things. We'll see you after the short break. Now, we could be facing a twindemic this winter. I think we are going to face yeah. a twindemic this winter with our health service grapples with COVID and the flu. Joining us to discuss is Professor of Health Systems at DCU, Anthony Staines. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us thank you. this morning. So, the twindemic, which is COVID and the flu, is yeah. this... We have, we have flu, we have heavy flu every couple of years and it stresses the health service unimaginably. Mm. You have queues everywhere, routine services delayed, routine operations cancelled, beds fill up. We, are, we have COVID right now. So we have three or 400 people in hospital all the time now with COVID. We have queues, we have ambulances queuing around the block. We have elective procedures cancelled, waiting lists rising right now. And we have no flu, we have hardly any flu. Mm. We, we have a handful of cases of flu. So what everyone in the business is worried about Leaving aside whatever COVID may or may not do, there's a fair chance that we will have a heavy flu season this year because they did in Australia in the summer. Okay. And it, that's, we tend, we don't always, but we tend to follow them. Okay. So, so that's, it kind of moves around the world. Flu. Yeah. It's mm. very peculiar. Yeah. Um, what people are worried about is if we get a heavy flu season and COVID. So we've got a health service that's already running at 90%, 99%, 100%, 110%. If we get flu on top of that, we're in serious trouble. And I, I suppose the thing on that is then get your vaccine and get your flu jab and stuff yeah. to try and stop yeah. that. But then why aren't the government and the HSC opening the vaccination or your booster to everyone that's under, under 50? Because now it's yeah. over 50 and those mm. who are immunocompromised. Yeah. I think, that, I think that's where they're going to end up. I think that's the end Why aren't they the doing it game. now? You'd have to ask NIAC that. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I think that right now we should be concentrating on getting the flu vaccines. If you haven't been boosted, get boosted. There are still people out there who haven't been vaccinated. Yeah. Yes. Get vaccinated. It's never too late to get vaccinated. Well, the vaccine, well, the flu, flu vaccine we've known for years cuts your risk of getting flu by about maybe 50%. Right. It doesn't prevent you getting yeah. it. But it does cut your risk of getting seriously ill quite a lot. COVID vaccine's even better at that. Mm. It doesn't stop you getting it. But it stops you ending up in hospital. It stops you. It reduces your risk of dying substantially. Yeah, that's so it. That's what we do. Yeah. Uh, ventilation. So we're, we're talking about your TV studio, big open space, well ventilated, mechanical ventilation, air filtration. You can buy air filters that are about the size of a kitchen chair okay. and run them off the mains. Yeah. 
Okay. And you can use those in a lot of buildings aren't suitable for mechanical ventilation. Right. But a lot of buildings, you could ro you could plug one of these in in the corner and let it run. But Anthony, are we back then too? Like for people, so you can get your flu vaccine and your yeah. and your COVID yeah. vaccine, right? You can get yeah. both of them. Yeah. Are we back to COVID? Are we back to schools opening windows and having kids in coats if they're allowed to wear their coats? Like, are we back to that? We could be if the Department of Education don't get their act together because there are alternatives. And there, there has been a bit of work done on the ventilation systems in the schools and we could get these plug-in systems. Okay. You know, they're, they're handy enough, they work pretty well. They're not perfect, but they're an improvement. And uh, my, my wife is a school teacher and sitting teaching in the, in the freezing winters yeah. is not, not huge ideal. fun. No, for um, her or the students. But we were and hearing know, of teachers yeah, having to go off and buy stuff themselves last year. And I know you said that children are one of the biggest spreaders of COVID because they, they get it. They're, they're, they're packed into classrooms, yeah. in the schools, and they're back as normal now. Yeah. So are you saying coming into the winter, they will spread COVID? Yeah, very likely, yes. Yeah. And, what? What, and so what can be done about that, like this ventilation? I mean, I just don't understand if people like you are saying this and then you're sort of saying, oh, it'll come to uh, October or it'll come to November, December when the, this is starting to spike and then the, the government will go and the HSE will go, yeah, lads, now everyone should be getting the vaccine. Mm. Instead of saying it now or in like big ad campaigns now, yeah. get your booster, get your vaccine, get your flu jab. To be fair to HSE, they are saying it now. The government probably needs to get behind them more strongly. Okay. So we need we need clearer political leadership, and we are talking about wearing masks again. We're talking about wearing good quality FFP2 masks in crowded indoor spaces. Okay. Public transport in particular, you know, buses and trains, with the best will in the world, are going to be potentially hot spots for spreading. Mm -hmm. Now you can put air filters on buses. I don't know if you can put them on trains, but you can put them on buses. Oh, uh, and you'd have to ask, you know, the bus company or yeah. an engineer. That's to why the detail. Uh, but that, that's what you're talking. You know, they, just we spend a load of money as a society keeping water clean. Yeah. So we don't get mass outbreaks of, of diarrheal diseases. We we that's we used to get those. Most kids in Dublin died before the age of five, a hundred years ago from diarrheal diseases. Yeah. Or not a hundred years ago, but 120, 130 years ago. So we, we've spent an awful lot of money in yeah. trying to do this with our air. Now, I don't want to be scaremongering, yeah. but it is the case of people were very happy when they didn't have to wear the masks again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, do you think it will be made mandatory in certain places again and that it should be made mandatory? Like we're looking at places like Japan, yeah. Korea, they wear masks all the time in winter. I, I think it should be, I think people should do it. And I think it needs political leadership to persuade people to do it. Okay. Whether it should be made mandatory or not is a very delicate political judgment. And I, you know, that's why we elect people. I'm not elected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Stephen Donnelly is. But you're recommending. Is. But I would recommend, I'd recommend they, they consider it sh and consider it sharpish. Because if we do get flu and COVID, even, you know, forget about new strains of COVID, just the existing strains are not much fun. And we're seeing more and more people who are multiply infected several times. Yeah. And every time you get infected, there's a significant risk of you left with long-term disability. So the number of people with long-term disability is going up. And it's going up because of long COVID. Now, it look... What we do don't, you mean by long-term disability? I mean, weakness, easy fatigability, yeah. brain right. fog. Yeah. I mean, th these are not like, down. you know... We've I can't... had some people in here, it's really mm. debilitating. Yeah, you've, se you've seen it yourselves. Yeah. So it's, and, you know, I've seen it in, co in colleagues. But we're just, we're building up, as we have more infections, we build up more people in that condition. Mm. Now, we don't have... Jack Lambert has been very strong about this, that we don't have proper clinics set up for them. Yeah. yeah. Other countries are ahead of us on that. Jack has done a lot, by the um, way. For long COVID, yeah. yeah. We were just he's speaking He's done a lot. It. Yeah. But it, it needs to be managed, it needs to be acknowledged, it needs to be managed, it needs to be dealt with. Yeah. It's, it's challenging. We don't know yet how many of these people will recover. If it's like uh, myalgic or what's it called, chronic fatigue syndrome, it takes about three years most people recover. But that's three, three years of you know, significant. Oh yeah, yeah. your life yeah. has changed. Significant disability. Yeah.
It is. Um, and having people in here, and I know Jack is calling for more government funding because yeah. his clinic isn't funded. Uh, we're just wondering how you feel about this. Certainly if you're in the health system, uh, how are you doing? Because I'm sure that that is like there, you're the ones who are going to be affected most with all of this. 0896 triple one triple one. And would you wear masks again if you thought it was it would help? Yeah. Would you please put the mask on in buses do. and please in please shopping centres? Yeah, please please do. Just Profess do it yourself. Yeah. Don't Professor. wait for the government to sell you. Because yeah. I'm doing it. Are you doing it? Yeah. You've started doing it already. Yeah. Um, Professor of Health Systems at DCU, Anthony Staines, thank you so much for joining us this thank morning. Thank you very we much. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now coming up, Derek is finding out how you can support men's health this uh, November. See, See you very shortly. Friends. And thanks for staying with us. You are watching Ireland AM. Uh, Derek is in Sam's Barbers in Dublin this morning. It's all for a very worthy cause. It is indeed. How are you getting on, Derek? Lather up his face, yeah. Hello, oh, Derek. I can't hear us, just for TV. <laughs> Derek, just continue oh, there. Oh, please be Derek. careful. No, don't say, say anything. Don't say anything. No. Or do say something. <laughs> Look he can't, at that beard. He oh. can't hear us. We're going to try to re-establish that connection. Someone oh. send him a smoke signal. He's in Dublin city centre <laughs> and say... Having... You're up. You're up, Derek. We're having a great laugh here on the tipping situation. Oh, the tipping. Do you uh, tip so, in restaurants? So Do you obviously, tip, Tommy? Leo Varadkar has brought in this yes. new uh, thing that if it says service charge in the bill, the bill, that tip goes to the servers or the staff, yes. whatever, where in the past it kind of got lumped in. Mm. Um, and so we were asked about America, like what is the, like who do you tip? So in America, James said, on the subject of tipping in America, we tip employees, not say the mechanic business owner. So if it's a business owner, we don't tip them. So we treat taxi drivers as if they're employees. So we tip them. But that's fine. But how about in America if they just treated their employees and paid them properly with a minimum yeah. wage? So is well, that just they, they, have to. Fortune and they tips. rely on the but, tips in America. But they shouldn't exactly. have to do that. They should be paid rather than being paid $2 to work in a restaurant an hour. Well, pay them. We're not here to talk you know? about America, though, are we? No, we're not. Um, uh, but tipping, look at this. It happened to me on several occasions when a taxi driver hasn't given me the correct change. Um, then I've that's my tip, mate. When I've challenged them on it. Yeah, yeah. that's my tip, mate. But I found that, really? that you'll hand the driver a note or whatever and they'd be slow enough giving you the money back. Anyway, send us your text in 0896111111. What about your barber? Do you tip your hairdresser? Well, well ask, let's find ask out. Derek. Derek, how are we getting on? Yeah, lads, you should always tip your barber. Anyway, welcome down here to Sam's Barbers. We're in the heart of the capital here this morning. Of course, kicking off November 2022. So we're calling all the Mobros out there to get involved in this fantastic campaign. Uh, we've got some of the frontline workers here with us this morning. Uh, first of Johnny, good morning to you. Good morning, Derek. How's it going? Now, Johnny, how, how long has that beer grown? Uh, well, because I've been on duty about a week. Yeah, about a week. Okay, okay. So tell us, why you, why you decided to get involved now this year? Well, we have a charity here that's, uh, that looks after men's mental health, looks after everything that, that us as frontline uh, workers deal with on a daily basis. As well as that, as a firefighter, uh, what we're exposed to with a lot of carcinogenics and what's out there, this is a charity that directly impacts what we do on a daily basis. Fantastic. You're going to be nice and smooth as well. Have you got a wife at home? I do. Yeah, she's going to be delighted. <laughs> You're going to be delighted with that. Now we're going to pop over here to South Key. Good morning to you. Morning. You're looking nice and cosy there in the chair. Nice and relaxed. Early yeah, morning start. Nice and relaxed. Oh, why are you getting involved here? Again, we're involved in the last number of years, the frontline Mobros, with Johnny and the rest of the lads in the station. And again, it's for our men mental health and cancer and that. So it affects everybody. So literally, we do our best to try and raise as much funds as possible. And what station are you based in then? We're based in Fisborough. Based in Fisborough, just out the road. All right, you're looking nice and smooth as well. Now we're popping over here to uh, Shea McCoy, representing the Gardaí here this morning. Good morning to you, Shea. Good morning, how are things? And you're nice and relaxed here this morning as well. It's all good. <laughs> Ready for beat on the street. And of course, a lot of the Gardaí involved this year as well, aren't they? There is, yeah. We have a good few. And look, at our mission statement is keeping people safe. And being involved in November and encouraging people to look after their physical and mental health and to talk is another way of keeping our own people safe. So that's why I'm involved. Now, let's talk about the Gardaí and beards, because are Gardaí allowed to have beards? They are allowed to have beards with certain rules. It's basically it's neat and tidy appearance, and that's OK. And, that, and that's OK. But you're looking good and smooth as well this morning. That is. And you're happy to be involved. Delighted. This is my 12th year of involved with it, and it's just it's really important. Yeah, yeah. OK, great. Oh, thank you so much, Gardaí. And Sam, it is... It is, it is one as well for so many men and indeed most sisters get involved in this isn't it 
Yeah, like, you know, I mean, we've got the most sisters are a big part of the November uh, uh, month because uh, without them women encouraging us uh, guys to uh, promote these moles, we'd be nothing. And, you know, it takes an awful lot for a guy to, uh, you know, start from fresh on the 1st of November and, you know, the mole sometimes isn't as good as they think it is so like you know just that that back up from a, a mole sister to give them that nod to say we got you and there we got you yeah and, you know and, and you're gonna we're going to continue with the boys here shaving them down and of course at the end of the month then they can pop in as well and, and clean themselves up. Well all the frontline Mobros, believe it or not, down at Sam's Barbers, they can come in at any time and uh, we can keep their tashes in uh, shape for the month and then at the end of it we always do a shave down as well but it's great to get all the frontline Mobros in on the 1st of November, get their, their shave downs done and it's just about getting them together and giving back what all of these guys and girls do for us all year round. For fantastic cause as well. But Sam, thank you so much for joining us here this morning to all our frontline uh, workers here as well. Uh, Tommy, I would suggest get a shave down, but you're already pretty smooth as well. Back to you in the studio. Thanks very much, Derek. Uh, I've uh, grown used one. to. Oh, I, 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 no, I used you to. Have, do, no, I've seen I used the to always do Movember back in the day, of course, because it does. It raises yeah. really vital, important funds. I think funds, you should do it this no um, November. For the likes <laughs> of mental burn. health, suicide prevention, prostate cancer, and no. testicular cancer. Not for Lucy. And I don't think Just the moustache should be the people what people want to see. Now, I'll tell you what people would want to see, and I know, Warren, you're going to be heading down to that barber shop pretty quickly, weren't you, there? <laughs> <laughs> the two of you were just going, ah, just show the rest of the frontline <laughs> workers just, there. It's just when he turned around and they were all there. It was just nice, a bit of a surprise nice to see them all. Men lying, sitting there waiting to be shaved. Um, I didn't know I had a thing for men in uniform, like, but it turns the out... The start of the next hour, where's Alan gone? Straight to Sam's <laughs> Barber's to get that beard trimmed. <laughs> to take up a new career. <laughs> uh, listen, I do donate, of course, it is. Is on November.com. Thank you very much. Now, Absolutely. still to come this morning, the one, the only, Daniel O'Donnell is going to be here. He's going to be talking about TikToks and fighting zombies. <laughs> Plus, our very own national treasure, Ed, all of our national treasure, Edward Hayden. Oh, yes, he's, he's loving here. it. He's, he's like, yeah, uh, obviously. He's giving us a paprika stew. A little and, bit different. Uh, your skin will be glowing this winter because we're getting all the advice from the skin nerd. See you back here shortly. Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, RT accused Taoiseach over licence fee. The chairwoman of RT accused the Taoiseach and the government of deliberately undermining the broadcaster by not committing to reforming the TV licence system. Four in ten Garda stations see crime rise despite lockdown. This is front page of the Irish Independent. Four out of every ten Garda stations recorded an increase in crime last year compared to pre-COVID levels despite being subject to lockdown restrictions for large parts parts of the year. The examiner leads with Martin rebukes Green and Fine Gael bad politics. Taoiseach Micheál Martin has accused his coalition partners Fine Gael and the Greens of engaging in bad politics by targeting Fianna Fáil ministers for attack. The star's front page, the monks no dope. Jerry the Monk Hutch took a stand against the spread of drugs in Dublin's Wheatfield Prison by making a stunning statement in front of several fellow prisoners. The mirror goes with Tyson US ban over Kinahan Link. Boxer Tyson Fury and his brother Tommy have admitted they were banned from the US over the heavyweights links to Irish mob boss Daniel Kinahan. Two years jail for excessive turf burning is the top story in the Daily Mail. People who burn excessive amounts of turf could face two years in jail under new regulations that came into force yesterday. The Herald's front page, remarkable bravery, ins inspirational cervical cancer campaigner Lindsay laid to rest. And finally, The Sun leads with the same story. Lindsay, we are so proud of you. It's just heartbreaking, isn't it? It is, and our thoughts this morning are with her family and her two gorgeous girls, Zoe Absolute, and Hayley. Uh, and yeah, her family. heartbreaking, absolutely, absolutely. Um, listen, let's move on, we're, and we're having... A, a... We're going to talk about something very different right now, but this studio just kind of erupted. And I remember when I was on holidays, I did this on Instagram to see what people gave. If they're staying in a hotel for a week, what do they tip if you're if so you're lucky enough, is it enough, only for a week? So do you tip for the whatever, cleaners? If you're there for a few days, do you tip, do you tip the, the cleaners when your you're hotel? on holidays? The person who is cleaning up after you, after your children. Absolutely, you do. So, Tommy, oh, you're an absolute well, liar. In this studio, you're an absolute liar. In this studio, it is fifty percent. Fifty percent. You don't tip, give them fifty percent. And fifty percent <laughs> don't tip. No. But Tommy Bo, are you saying that you tip? I do, of course. You absolutely. do not. Don't Listen, tell the truth. If you can, I myself and Tommy everyone. said we wouldn't tip 
We don't, not we wouldn't. Well, you've never heard don't. of it. That's the I've thing. never heard of it, that you tip your cleaner. Now, I know on cruise ships, you have to you do tip it. It's included. <laughs> As Tommy said, you can't get off the ship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I we were having an absolute, totally loud uh, discussion about this. But see, I, I think what the, the cleaners <laughs> thing is that there's not even the same person cleaning your room no. all the time. So who are you leaving it to? You can find out. And where does the money go? They just pocket it and that's them going off to... Yeah, anyway, and most, people, mean, most uh, people leave the tip at the start like of the, the holiday to get nicer service. Oh, I didn't realise that. They leave it at the start for the cleaner so you get the, the different towel. But then if there's a different it. girl the next day cleaning your room, do you, cle do you tip her? You can ask who your cleaners um, can be. So we've loads of texts in this, as you can imagine. Yeah. Anna said, straight answer, I tip everyone. Lived in the States for years. It was the norm. Simon, though, said, with the cost of everything going up, it's become increasingly harder to tip, Absolutely. so lots of families can't afford the luxuries, but if you can, of course, it is good to do it. Keep your text coming in. Do you text the cleaners? Do you text the taxi tip, drivers? Tip. Text, did I say tip? Yep. Tip, tip them. Yeah. Anyway. I've never heard of oh, uh, tipping six. the cleaners. Triple one, triple one. After the break, we're going to be finding out why Daniel O'Donnell, I bet you he tips, is <laughs> fighting the waxwork dummies we're going to see after the break. Now, our next guest has recorded more than 50 albums, sold more than 15 million records, and still topping the charts. And he's, do you know what? Still surprising us all of the time. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have him in studio. It is Daniel O'Donnell. Good Great morning to, to be you. With wow. you both. How are you? Yes. We've been talking to you for so long on Skype. Like the last time we were talking to you was you and Magella in the bed. <laughs> You Who didn't bring, bring her? Oh, Lord, she's probably still in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, you could be getting in trouble here. Well, now, we do get to see you in the bed again in your brand new video. I know. Which is Max. a mini, it's like a mini horror film, The Night of the Daniels. Tell us about this. Well, you know, this is, this is the reason we did the Laddie Da video. The guys in React approached me before COVID ever had to see would I do a video with them because they're so creative. I wasn't aware of what they did then. Yeah. And I said, OK, we'll, we'll do something with you. And then COVID hit and there was no filming of anything. And they wanted to do it last year, this video that's out now. And still it was gathering people, as you saw in, in the video, and I wasn't comfortable. I found the Laddie Da song and I said to Kieran, my manager, why don't we get Kieran and Sean to do something for the laddie da and they took hold of it and i mean i didn't know what i was doing as, uh, you know when i was doing it i mean i didn't know what i was doing this time well i had an idea this time what it, you know what they were capable of but i mean this one is because last one was all green screen and like you're on surfboards and everything i know well this is the real deal oh and listen it is the real deal and for people who haven't seen it i think shall we take it up absolutely let's do enjoy it enjoy this Closer, the flames are now licking my body. Oh, won't you help me? Feel like I'm slipping away. It's hard to breathe, and my chest is a heaver. Lord of mercy, I'm burning a hole where I lay. Cause your kisses left me higher. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to Daniel O'Donnell, come oh, on. The, the things that happen when you had 60. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You're a great sport, though, aren't you? For a couple of guys who... who I'm sure people pitch stuff to you all yeah. the time. And you actually taking a gamble to do something like that. Well, you know, the joy of this is that all these people involved are living on my doorstep. Oh, right. You know, and the, the, we're, we're all within a, a few miles radius of yeah. one another. And to think that people with that creativity are living up at home and I just, I think they're fantastic, each and every one of them that was involved in that. And all of the people that came out, mm -hmm. you know, the people that, the lo it's all local, nearly all local people, but now there were people came from far away too, to be, you know, in the, in video, the video and just be there. We were there some nights till five in the morning wow. in the town in Dunlow, 
You know. Because we have to, like, the basic premise, you're going to want, like, this is eight minutes. The basic premise is Daniel O'Donnell saves Dunlow from <laughs> Daniel O'Donnell's. <laughs> like, it's just so, like, thriller, bye-bye, we'll see you later I know, on. I know, I know. Do you like Halloween, like, whenever this was pitched? Because you've got the grandkids now and stuff. Do I the know, I was kind of worried. I was, I'm thinking, I wonder, will they, you know, will they be frightened about it? But uh, I haven't really discussed it with them yet, what, the, what they're thinking. How do they Maybe feel not. about Granny and Granddad in the bed together, saving, oh, getting sure the phone? Listen, they're, <laughs> <laughs> well, you the past no heed of anything. Did, did it take a lot to convince Magella to get into the video? Oh, no, she's game for anything. <laughs> oh, Lord, no. She'll be getting a supporting actress. <laughs> <laughs> I see them walking in the because you've joined TikTok as well, so is Magella a big part of that? Is she behind well, directing it for no, you? No, no, she wasn't there. Now, TikTok, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure what TikTok is at all. <laughs> I'm on it. But, um, and this is me, this was the first, I bought, wore this jumper for the TikTok. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, so this is my TikTok jumper. Oh, this is the, this is the first, the <laughs> first thing out there. Aye. And, and you know, the funny thing about it was I went out, to the, I was in England doing some promotion for the album and I went out to the post office and I didn't pass any heed, you see, so I was sitting, did the TikTok thing and all and then I kind of looked around like this and I seen this thing down my sleeve. A, piece of, a board must have deposited on me when I was at the post office. And I said to the fellas, I said, I hope that's not a way to TikTok. Oh, sure as God, when TikTok came out. Viral. There you go. Down. Bird. Did Bird. people pick up on it? Oh, some. A fella did say it was a very authentic country look. <laughs> yeah. You've washed the top for us oh, today. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Fair play to yeah. you. Because, uh, honestly, you joined TikTok. And like the comments underneath your first video, finally TikTok has become Maybe. a thing. Daniel is finally here, but it's not the first time that you oh, have I indeed know. gone viral on TikTok. Can we take a look? At, can we take a look at this video? Oh God bless this. Hey, somebody's after saying Daniel Donald's coming in the night. A joke, can I say? You can't leave us alone, will you? I won't show that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a picture of him. Same as that. Huh? Same as that. Oh. Same as that. Right. Let me know. All right. That was done, you know, when we were filming the, the video, the night of the day. Oh, what was it? <laughs> He's great, that That's guy. the Donegal daddy. Yeah, 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 he's great. Was he giving you he, tips? He does loads of stuff on, on, on what is it, TikTok? TikTok? He's on all the time. <laughs> but he said to me, he says, he says, uh, 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 will, will we do this? And I said, I, I didn't know what we were doing, you know. <laughs> I just said, I. Daniel, at this it? stage, could anyone ask you anything? And you'd be like, Daniel, will you be my god? Will you be the godfather <laughs> to my child? I, yeah, I will. Oh, well, yeah, no, I have grand. to halt it there. I was <laughs> asked loads of times, you know, and I thought, no, you need somebody that's... About. That you might actually yeah. know. Yeah. You're teeing yourself up for this. I tell you, you're teeing yourself up for trouble as well. What about um, skincare, beauty, uh, you know, anti aging, whatever else is massive on TikTok as well? I mean, oh, look God. at you, you look fantastic. Oh, you're I wouldn't be at that carry on now. Oh, you're going to have huh? to give the secrets to the huh? aging perfectly. Jared Leto. Brad Pitt, they've all started their own lines, their own skincare, telling everyone how they're going to be beautiful. You look no, better than all of them. They ain't got nothing on Daniel. So God. What's your, what's your beauty tip? I'll have to be getting the, the seaweed, do you, you know, the rack down on the, on the shore. On the shore. The my, and Is that what you do? It, do you just shove a bit of... Actually, you just don't shove Go anything. down and stick your head in the you seaweed. You do. I have seen a beauty tip from Daniel O'Donnell. Or the aqueous or the Silcox base. Silcox base, that's, exactly. That's you use it because of that. It's I do. very good, isn't it? It's very good. Yeah. Cheap as chips. It lasts you know for years. I started do, doing too, just for me. I get a, a lot of. Um, I had COVID in, in, in February. Yeah. And since it, my chest has kind of caught up. And I started steaming, you know, every. I do it maybe three or four times a day oh, to right. clear. Do you have the towel over the head? No, I have a thing, a beauty. It's a beauty thing, you see, and you can put your face in. You it. bought the thing with the plastic thing that you I put did, your face it's in. It's easier to steam. I'm so not even I, joking. Right now, people, they're just going and buying them. That's it. Daniel on. O'Donnell says, and you could look like so this. So as well as the chest been clear. The... Look at the pores. <laughs> perfect, doesn't he? I'll be gorgeous. The I pores mean, are fantastic. For 40 years in showbiz, you will be in February. Like, it's some achievement. I mean, I'd say 40 years, 39 years ago, you never would have dreamt no. to be still topping the charts well, and have videos like this. I out. made the first record in February 1983, went up to Big Tom Studios. Yeah, brilliant. And um, I could never, ever have imagined that all these years later, you know, that this album... And, you know, this new album has all, bar four songs, it's all Irish writers. 
um, I, I sent out a message to them. You know, I'd recorded stuff before mm. from all of them. And I said, I'm going to record, have you anything written or would you like to write something? And they came back with all these mm. great songs. So much so that I have next year's album nearly done. Ready to go? Yeah. Wow. But you have been a supporter of artists, artists, you know, your contemporaries, writers, and people who have, who have followed you, who have come up behind you for years. Like, it's been very important to you to bring people along with you. Yeah, well, you know, it's not easy to start. Yeah. And I suppose if I see somebody, if I've seen somebody on here now, especially some of the young ones, if I had any contact for them, I would let them know that they did well. When I started, you know, very few people give me encouragement. And that wasn't that they didn't want me involved. They just thought at that time, you know, discos was coming in and they thought the music business was finished as we knew it. Yeah. But it's never finished. There's always going to be um, an Irish flavour here. Oh, yeah. People will always want a certain amount of people. I mean, the country music and the Irish ballads, that's what we are, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and you're a brilliant supporter for that, even right through COVID, when a lot of artists were really struggling out there. You were such a great spearhead and trying to push their causes forward as well. Yeah. And, and, but, uh, well, because uh, even we're talking with that with Irish music, like Irish music, it's in such a really strong position. There are so many young people coming through and we're seeing the concerts are back now. People yeah. are really enjoying getting out and enjoying it. And, and even for you, like you have this tour coming up as well in, in this summer. Yeah. I mean, it's, things like this must be so, so exciting to be back out no, there it and is. loving it. And it's great because like we, we just did Killarney um, at the end of August. And this is the first tour in Ireland we have done since probably, I would say 2018 now. COVID has kind of put us, mm. you don't know why, when you were out last. I think 19 we did Killarney <clears throat> and then it's hard to mind when we were, God. you know, we're supposed to do shows and they were postponed, postponed. So, like, we'll be all round oh, Ireland you're so in, in August. So, look, and the tickets go on sale. Well, the board gosh is on sale, yeah. but the others go on sale uh, the 18th, 19th. Yeah, the board gosh is the 27th of August, yeah. obviously, 2023. I mean, the place is going to be going mad, for particularly with these music videos and everything else. I just see you at Electric Picnic next year. <laughs> I'm not joking. I see Daniel O'Donnell. I was there in a caravan this year. You were in did a caravan? The, no, but did you see that? There was one that had a caravan. Oh, yeah. Some kind of Daniel and... In a Daniel, Daniel and Magella yeah. caravan at it. Mm -hmm. Would you perform, Daniel, If they asked you, would you perform at Electric Picnic next year? You know, Kieran and the band, the musical director, Kieran Mitchell, he says... We'll do the picnic, we'll do the picnic. I said, what picnic? He said, electric picnic. <laughs> I said, what would I be doing there? <laughs> but sure, uh, do you know what? Let's put it out there now. Who knows? Let's Who put knows? it out you there now. You would tackle anything. I think you would be tackle absolutely anything amazing. The brand new album, I Wish You Well, is out on Friday, the 4th of November, with just some lovely songs in it. And the video is an utter joy. Daniel O'Donnell, thanks for joining us. Thanks a million. Daniel, it's great, great to see you. Inspired by nature, powered by light. Beko Harvest Fresh sponsors cookery on Ireland AM. Oh, there's nothing like some stew for breakfast. You're very far away. Come here to me. Now, if you're, <laughs> if you're looking for a winter warmer, that's supposed to be you. I know. <laughs> we're having stew for breakfast and Edward Hayden's in the kitchen. Good morning, Edward. Yeah. There, there, there we, we have go. it. That tells the story. Sure it does. It certainly does. And we are having stew for breakfast, uh, Tommy. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to do a really nice kind of a beef paprika and tomato stew. So again, today is the 1st of November mm. and I suppose the weather uh, at this time of the year normally is that little bit cooler, a little bit cooler than it is actually uh, at the minute. But it's these kind of lovely one pot wonders, the winter warmers, that kind of hug in a bowl. Mm. So that's what oh, I'm going it. to do And uh, I was asking you that about you brown off the beef first. Yeah, always. I think it's really imperative whether you're doing a kind of a chicken stew or a lamb stew or a beef stew just to kind of to fry off the meat first so you can just see that's what I've done just before we started on, on air here just to get that nicely browned off what that does is it just seals in the kind of the moisture there seals in the the fat from there 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some salt and pepper. And you You're can see I'm just... Why, 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 yes. why are you doing it on the table? Well, because what I'll have then is I can put in my salt and pepper and I won't have to put my salt and pepper cellar over the steam coming up. So therefore, I won't have all the steam going into my salt, so I won't have soggy salt. My goodness. Every <laughs> day is a school day with Edward. <laughs> Every might, single day. If that was my house, you get a few crumbs and a bit <laughs> yeah. of whatever else you get into it too. Extra flavour. And there you have it. So then, really, once the beef is browned off there, put whatever it is that you'd like in there. So I've got some garlic. I've got some How many onion. garlic cubes? I've got about four cloves of four. garlic there as well. God, That'll right. keep you all always, quiet. Keep you always, all quiet and away from each other for the morning. You always love asking how many garlic cloves. I'm you? going to put in some onion and some carrot. <laughs> it's and put something in to ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to ask. <laughs> oh, four. It demonstrates a bit of interest, doesn't yes, it, exactly. Alan? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Edward. There we have it. I'm going to put in... I put in carrots, I put in onions, I put in garlic, and I put in a bit of red pepper there. But the invitation to you is to kind of look at the bottom shelf of your fridge, put What's in leeks, there? put in celery, put in maybe some celery. Is there anything you wouldn't put in? I probably wouldn't put in the, the, the kind of the shorter cook. So you wouldn't be putting in your broccoli, your cauliflower, your mange too, your green beans, because they would just be completely disintegrated yeah. by the time. So something that's a little bit more robust. The celery, the leeks works really well. A bit of turnip is gorgeous in there as well. Mm. So you can see we're just getting a real nice sense of colour. And even if you can just look down there at the bottom of the pan, you can see that we've got that real sense of it just all browning off. And that's going to is give that you that not burning? Is no, that not what we call no, burning? No, no, no. That's desirable. That's why I'm showing it to you. <laughs> because that's going to give you the lovely colour formation for your sauce. So here what I've got then is I've got some paprika and I've got some plain flour. I'm going to pop those in and I'm just going to shake those in around on the top of um, my beef there. That's going to dry up and that's going to even cause greater browning on the bottom of my pan. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some tinned tomatoes. Can I ask you why in. the paprika? Paprika just, I think, works very well with the beef. It's a very complimentary flavour. So it's not as spiced or as warming as, like, the cayenne or the chilli, but yet it just has a very complimentary undertone. It has that warming sense, right. you know? And it works nicely with the, with the beef there. On top of that, I'm going to put in some uh, stock. So I'm going to put in some beef stock then. And, Alan, you can see what I'm doing then. If you just look with my wooden spoon... You're, you're I'm actually taking all the it. stuff off the yeah, bottom. Yeah, absolutely. So once the liquid goes in there, that will instantly lift everything off the bottom. Obviously, the flour that will have kind of stuck there, Tommy, with the um, fat will yeah. kind of be now coming away, and that's going to be your thickening element. And obviously, um, this is telly time, but would you yeah. let the, the flour... Like, it obviously... You'd no, let it... you don't actually need to brown your flour because everything in there, what's more imperative, and that's why I started it a little bit earlier, is the kind of the browning of the beef. Okay. That's really beef key. Yeah. Uh, that's really key to brown the beef, the vegetables, <laughs> then put in your flour and your liquids. What I'm going to do then now is you can either cover that with a tightly fitting lid and cook it for about an hour and a half, or what I've actually done is I've transferred mine into an oven-proof casserole dish. I prefer, it in, the, I prefer in the, it in the oven. It's easier in the oven, is well, it not? It, well, what I'll say to people if they're doing it in the oven um, is it's just a little bit... Ooh. I won't say safer, that's the wrong word, but if you're doing it in the pot, you do need to keep a more occasional and stir on it. Yeah, because where you put flour, it in the oven and you don't have it. That thickening element of your flour will kind of stick to the bottom. I've cooked up some lovely Yum. long grain rice here and I've just put a little bit of oil or butter and a little so, bit of seasoning now, on that. Rice, I wouldn't have put rice with a stew. I would have maybe a mashed potato. You could put a I... lovely creamy mash. You could put uh, even a lovely tagliatelle if you wanted. Oh, I just love the rice. Yeah, it's lovely with this because, again... The beef cooking down in the tomatoes, it's that very rich kind of flavour. Look at the lovely oh, sense of that. Oh, this now, is if that's not a hug in a bowl, I don't know what is a hug in oh, a bowl. But you're oh, a hug in a bowl every uh, week, Well, Edward. listen, I do my best anyway. I do my best to you. Oh, I uh, try on. to treat you. Now, there we have it. So we've got our lovely bits and pieces in there. Yum. A nice bit of the sauce there as well. And then I'm just going to ah, give you a little, bit, a little of bit of parsley. A little flourish. There's always room There's your hug and a bowl. Uh, gorgeous. Flourish. Look at that. Stunning. And it's just really nice and tasty. Also, can I say to you guys, yeah. if there is some of that left over, transfer it into a lovely casserole dish and maybe put a lovely bit of mashed potato piped on top of it or a piece of puff pastry and phyllo pastry, Beautiful. and you have it for your dinner the next day as a pie, Edward so your Hayden. stew becomes a pie. Oh.
gorgeous. Brilliant. Absolutely gorgeous, Edward. Thank you. And the paprika's just coming through. Aren't I telling you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Coming. You now should listen up, to me. <laughs> thank you, Edward. We've got your uh, the TLC for your skin this winter. The Skin Nerd, a.k.a. Jennifer Rock, joins us after the break. Enjoy that. Inspired by nature. Powered by light. Beko Harvest Fresh. Sponsors Cookery on Ireland AM. And now, cold air and dry heat. These are just some of the elements your mm -hmm. skin will be facing this winter if it ever gets cold. It's been quite I've, It's going to get cold. We yeah. can be sure of that. To make sure you have the best defence mechanism, Jennifer Rock, a.k.a. the Skin Nerd, is helping us get prepared. Good morning to you, Good Jennifer. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Got a lot going on here today. And does the skin... <laughs> like, obviously, we're moving from seeds and, and the skin does get affected by that, the 100%. cold weather. I think the lack of humidity, the fact that there's no moisture in the air, that has a huge impact on the skin. So there's something called transepidermal water loss. It's called tool. So really? essentially, essentially, we naturally have water within our skin, but this time of the year through radiators, heat on, heat off, yeah. that fluctuation causes the heat to escape and the, the water to escape from our skin naturally. So this is more about like a pep in your step and how do you segue your way into the colder months, essentially. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because something is going to happen. You always notice the dryness, a little you bit do, of flakiness. You do, you start to and feel it. Crap. And it does, yeah, it does affect how you feel for sure. Yeah. So definitely something to consider. Now, you, you, every time you're on, you're always talking about inside out. Yeah, I'm a big believer it. Mm. I really do. I mean, look, it'd be great if I could say that, you know, there's a magic eye cream or a magic serum that will just poof all of our yeah. situations away. But it really is about inside out. So, and Edward always talks so well about, you know, food and deliciousness and nutrients. And that's what it is. It's all about inside out. So for the week that it is being midterm, I thought I'd bring something in for children and families alike. So what you have there is your, that's delicious. I would actually encourage one of you to taste it. Okay. So this is I'm Swedish Nutra. It. It's available in Lloyd's, 21.95, extremely affordable. Isn't it delicious? Yeah. Yeah. It's like orange cordial or something like that. Yeah, so it's, for, for children, I think it's brilliant because it's very hard to get them to take anything. So this isn't instead of eating well, this is in addition so to eating well. So are all the multifits you need in this so for, for young children? Exactly, there's 28 nutrients in there, so it's going to be great for their energy, helping them to sleep at night, which I think parents would be delighted mm -hmm. to hear. But it's, I have to almost read it out. There's 28 active ingredients, vitamin C, B3, zinc, B1. It's there, There's so many more. Super green complex, lots of proteins. So the all list there. is nearly ended to be honest. I know, when you see all that though, do you go, oh my God. What like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's all, but the, the <clears throat> beauty of this particular brand, the Swedish Nutra, is that everything is clinically proven and it's as pure as it can be. So it's in addition to getting to eat well, but coming into this time of year when they're going to come home with sniffles and cold yeah. and lethargic yeah. and, and the days are dark or they're getting up in the dark, it's yeah, it's definitely one to consider. And it's a, you can take it from three onwards, whereas a lot of supplements you can take from 12, 16 onwards. No, but this one's great for little nippers. Can I just ask you, what's the difference then? At what age do you stop and what goes into adult ones that are not in this? The reality with adult ones is that we tend to need higher doses oh, and right, also okay. they tend to by and large Alan to be honest look after our joints our muscles and different mm, organs where this is a generic that, yeah. goodness if you could get them to yeah. eat green juice every day that's essentially a version of it lovely now under eye cream hello mice hello. please help me help, <laughs> so this help, me. help us all <laughs> I spy vitamin C so uh, essentially vitamin C is great for collagen elastin clarity darkness so what this eye cream is is vitamin C in abundance you apply it right underneath the eye now where you apply an eye cream is important. So first I put on with ring fingers, bring it right literally underneath the, so everywhere my glasses are covering but exactly as you're applying it there, across the, so the eyelid. Bone. The bone right up under the lash line, across the eyelid and then through your eyebrows. So, so not everywhere. into the puffy, the, the soft tissue part here, you can. no? The key part that I'd love people to apply this, particularly this product because the active ingredients in it, it there? is right inside into the corner where I suppose the kind of the, the little oh, bridge of your lot. glass will sit. But look at the pigment in it. Yeah. 96% uh, of people that use this after 30 days said that they saw a huge difference because there's an iridescence to it. So this time of the year, not only is vitamin C great for that awakening look, but it essentially you could get away with three or four hours sleep, if you will, not that I'll endorse it, but it'll definitely give the, that's, the skin that's a little bit of a glow. That's an average for Maren. That's, that's an average for Put down the Bridget and Bucks, Maren, put them down. <laughs> but this one is ideal because if you look at it when you're close to it, you'll see that the eye area becomes just so much brighter immediately. Lovely. So I love it because it's a quick fix and a long-term fix all together. Okay, moving Green on. coffee in it too. 
So then we have our Kiss False Scar, the new way to lash. What is clever about this is that I definitely have been an addict of false lashes over the years and lash mm. extensions and and. But this is a kinder way to do it and it's that you're in control of it. So essentially what you have inside is your uh, Kiss False Scar remover so you can take it off. You also have your False Scar starter kit and your overnighter. So what is it? So if you look yeah. in the centre there, you see the little lashes. Now typically when you get lash extensions applied or you put lashes on yourself, they go on top of the lash. Yeah. So you can almost see it when somebody's fluttering their lashes mm -hmm. and they're looking at you. Whereas this actually is applied underneath your own lash. So it's really discreet. The adhesive is really safe. So it's very simple. They have step-by-step -step how to do it. You put on the uh, sealant, you put on the actual uh, piece itself, oh, yeah. and then you it's all there. come together. And then the overnighter is a new addition to the family because it allows you to lengthen it. So you can reapply this every couple of days and you'll get nearly 10 days out of this particular starter kit. Okay. So flutter, flutter, flutter your way into flutter. Away. Yeah, Dr. some House of them are very fake. Okay, move on to the Dr. Hauschka, yes, so this is from All Care. This is why I love this. this is brand new, first of all. Dr. Hauschka, always very kind and caring to the skin, but when you apply it, it goes on like a gel. You have your hands quite wet and it liquefies into a milk. So it's a beautiful fluid product that will remove all of your day mascara and lashes, if you will. Included. Oh, does it do mascara as well? It takes everything. It's a beautiful, beautiful product, but it really sl like it slides and glides onto the skin. It has a beautiful pigment in it. Then the main ingredient is Rugen Chalk, which is a renowned cleansing ingredient that really helps to slough off dead skin cells, but in a way that it's really caring oh, to the skin. Oh, it it's feels a beautiful lovely. And if you have your hands slightly wet, which, and again, you can get a lot of heat into this product, so coming home at night, you're tired, or coming home at you guys do at lunchtime when you're tired, and <laughs> you put the product <laughs> on your hand, really get the heat into it, and it just melts into the skin. Oh, that's Delicious. nice. Yes. Very that. quickly, the last one Last, there. by no means least, this is Yonka Paddy, one of my absolute go-tos. What they have is their hydration. Everyone needs hydration. 365, to be completely honest with you. Um, but this has essentially a Lena Twain, one of my favourite go-to cleansers always. It has the lotion Yonka, which I have coined the Spritz O'Clock phrase because I feel that this is the pro this is the product that started all off. It is the divine spritzing. quintessence, essential oils in there, calming, cooling, great for pregnancy, menopausal, the most irritated skin, and it's aromatic, so it's extremely experiential. And then last by no means, they have the Hydrat Number One Cream. Feels beautiful, extremely hydrating, locks in moisture, suited to all. And it's all in that gift set. Yeah, and look at it, and it's a cotton bag. A little bag. So it's really, really beautiful. And, and it's experiential oil. and it's the quintessence oh. of dust. You're like <laughs> quoting Shakespeare here this morning. <laughs> That's what skincare is. That is Jennifer, fantastic. and you're staying with us and you're I going to be indeed. taking questions yes. a little later on. Yeah, cool. so any concerns that you might have, 0896 111 Jennifer is here to answer them for you. She certainly is. And in the next hour, Star of Stage and Screen, Rebecca O'Mara will be here. Plus, in fashion, it's all about winter outfits. We're back very shortly on Ireland AM. It's great to have you back. We're, still... getting, we're getting great controversy. It was not controversy. This no. new law to protect employees <laughs> tips that Leo Varadkar is bringing in on December 1st. And we're in brought to myself and Tommy's attention no, no, this no, morning. No, no, to your own attention. Oh, would you get yourself. a grip? You had you were literally... <laughs> Okay, so this is about I tipping. I didn't realise that you're meant to tip cleaners in the hotel. No, I didn't know that. You're not, you're not meant to tip anyone, but it is the, they're the forgotten people who are not tipped sometimes, so an awful lot of people do tip them. And I was wondering, the two lads never heard of it before, I tip the cleaner. Michael says, my sister and I always leave a tip for the cleaner when we leave our <laughs> apartment. Yeah, me with my no children, leaving so much of a mess. Um, Linda said, always tip the cleaners during my year out from my career. I worked as a housekeeper in Australia. After someone checked out, the first to enter the room was the manager who would collect the tip. <gasps> no, then no. at the end of the week, the tips were divided oh. amongst all the staff. Oh, it was okay. always good to tip anybody in hospitality and leisure. Tim there says, I always leave a tip every morning in the hotel. It could be between two and five euro and I leave it on the pillow depending on the length of stay. That's but what my friend does. So she leaves between three to five euro and she doesn't care about leaving coins. It's whatever she has every single day. So whoever is cleaning the room that well, day gets it. Aiden, Aiden's mess here, Gum. Where does it end? <laughs> Do you have to tip the postman for delivering the post now? Do you have to tip the bin man for emptying the bins? Where does it end? Tips encourage employers to cut employees' pay. And there's a lot to be said for that. You, That's why Tommy doesn't tip anywhere. Do people anywhere. not give, like, a bottle of wine to the postman? You know, the people at you the, get for at Christmas. Christmas. At Christmas, yes. Yeah, it's so not every day you give something to them. No, no. exactly. Thanks so, for delivering that. Here's, here's yeah, two euros. Have a people, great Christmas. I suppose it's people in the... They're cleaning your room. 
yeah. at the but see, my thing is... They're not being... But, they, but they, in a lot of countries that you go on holidays, there'd be no minimum wage. Yeah, but we're talking about... No, that's not our fault. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, I... I because... I think we should be nice. I think in hotels, not the same person cleans your room every day. But there then leave a, a tip there every day, then. Leave two euro there by the bed every day. But they're not supposed to take money. How do they know it's for them? Write a note. This is for you. So what do but you how do, do they you know it's do... for them? This, this is, is for you. you. It could be for Carl anyway. when he came back in. Hello, lovely <laughs> cleaner. This, this is could for go you. on all day. I mean, and this isn't even touching on the text message. You're really, well, you're really doing backflips to find a way not to give anyone a no, tip. I, I just, love that. I'm just <laughs> wondering. Because they're not allowed to touch money in their, your room, obviously. They are, uh, well, yeah, exactly. Um, listen, thank you so much for sending all those texts. Because all morning we've been doing this. It's divided, all morning. divided the studio this morning, Baz. <laughs> out. Now, yeah. on the way, actor Rebecca O'Mara. She's worked in America. Let's see how much Rebecca tips. <laughs> we'll be talking about her impressive CV, which includes everything from Line of Duty to... Thomas the Tank Engine. We'll talk to you very shortly. There you go. Our next guest is an actor known for her roles in Red Rock and Line of Duty. Please welcome to the show this morning, Rebecca O'Mara. How are you? Good morning. Great, thanks. Lovely thanks so to have much. you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Because I was going on about, you know, all these, <laughs> all of these things that you've been in and Tommy. It's all been Thomas the Tank Engine for you in our house, I have to say. <laughs> Caitlin and Thomas right. the Tank Engine. I have a two-year-old boy who's oh, obsessed geez. with it. Yeah, loves oh, it. That's, oh, that, so, that just makes me so look happy. Look at you there, spitting the <laughs> image of you. So, I know. Uh, they, gonna... did actually, they did actually look at my face and try and, and make some likeness when they created the character. Yeah. No way. I don't really see it, though. But... I don't see it either. I need to see your lips <laughs> the doing lips. that. What's the, li what's the, the lips, lips doing? The nose. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Know that. <laughs> well, he's definitely going to hear your voice say, "Going, oh, that really? doesn't sound right." Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm such a like two-year-olds, three-year-olds. They think I am a rock star. Like, <laughs> I remember going to a premiere of one of the Thomas films in Leicester Square and being mobbed by tiny little children. It was, uh, yeah, living the dream, living mm. the dream. Because yeah. um, wasn't it Eddie Redmayne <laughs> was talking about the fact that he was voicing a character oh, after right. he'd won his Oscar. He was oh, on the Graham Norton oh, show oh, talking oh, about God. this I the other night. It, no. And he was just like, they slapped and went straight to DVD and they slapped, you know, Oscar winner Eddie Redmayne and all the headlines were like, Oscar winner straight to DVD film. Oh. And he was like, but I was still a part of Thomas. His kids are delighted with yeah, it. Yeah. Because do you ever have to do the voice for them when you're at parties? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And uh, and for my niece and nephew as well and my godchildren. And, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Gordon. Yeah. Well, you yeah, keep my son happy and you keep me happy because <laughs> Line of Duty then is me oh. and my wife. Like, we loved that yeah. show. I mean, what yeah. was a part like being part of such a show that... It's it's such a hit now. It's such a massive success. It's such a phenomenon. Um, it was kind of scary turning up on that one because they were so established and everyone knew each other so well. Mm. And um, but they were really welcoming. You know, Daniel Mays is lovely and, and Will Malore and, and um, Martin Compton. They were just mm. really kind and lovely. Um, you know, they really were. But it was, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of scary. It was because like being, it was season three. It would really yeah. hit. Like it had become a global phenomenon at this yeah. stage. And it had really, like I remember remember that season so well. That's the one that made me go, I cannot miss a minute. Yeah, yeah. And did you have any clue where it was going? No, not at all. No, not at all. Um, in fact, um, <laughs> don't tell the producers this, but I didn't read the script because I didn't want to know. Yeah, I didn't want to know what happened. So, yeah. What do you mean you didn't read In the season that you were in? Yeah, I, well, yeah, I didn't read it because I didn't want to know. Yeah, I don't even want to say now in case anyone hasn't seen it. But um, yeah, like myself and Daniel Mays meet in a bar and we fall for each other. Yeah. And I didn't want to know what happened to him or anything that happened to him after that. So yeah, I was going full <laughs> method on that one. <laughs> I don't blame you. How does that so work? Good. So yeah, did they kind of go, did, your I didn't meant to actually know. walk off stage yeah, and get no, into that I car? Just, I didn't need to know. I learned my lines from my scenes and that was it. And that was oh, it. And then, okay. I watched, and then I watched it on TV and I was like, oh my God. I love yeah. it. I think so many <laughs> actors must have done that with that because it was yeah. like, what is going on here? Yeah. But that's interesting that you did that yourself. Yeah. Because you were also in Ken Loach's Jimmy's yeah, Hall. Yeah, Which yeah. is... It feels, when I read about how he directs, it's like something I've never really heard of before. Yeah. What well, does he no do? There's no script and it's all improvised and we spent weeks improvising that, yeah. Ken so, Loach, who yeah. has won every sort of yeah. award. Yeah, it's an amazing process, yeah. And he, he shoots chronologically. Um, so, yeah, that was a fantastic oh, experience. Oh, really? Yeah. And does he kind of 
edit it. Yeah, I was doing goes. something, you were saying that you're a part of something and then he just goes, oh, in my head, yeah. I've got this and I'm not yeah, doing it anymore. Yeah, he's like, no, we're not going to do that scene. We're going to skip to this scene. And uh, yeah, you know very little, but it's really exciting. It's an amazingly exciting process. You it know, must be so hard though, whenever you're kind of learning your lines, getting ready for something and he just comes along and just says, now I've decided we're not using that scene yeah. anymore. But with him, you didn't even learn your lines because you never saw a script. So it was all improvised. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. To get the call to do a film with him then must be kind of, um, I'm pretty good at my job. If you've got a director <laughs> who's willing to trust you yeah. to be able to improvise, being in the 1930s, uh, yeah. you know, set in middle of Ireland, you know, it's all about Jimmy who gets deported yeah. to, to America. Yeah, no, it was amazing because he called me himself as well, Ken. And so, yeah, it was kind of amazing being called by Ken Loach on your phone. You're like, hi, Ken, how's it going? Thanks a million. Yeah. Cheers. But I've been so lucky with the directors and actors that I've worked with. Um, I, I just worked with a with a, a director called Macon Blair on Toxic Avenger, and um, Peter Dinklage stars in that. And um, and Macon is just like he's he's also an actor himself and a writer and director, and he's just the loveliest human being. So I, I'm so lucky with the people that I mm -hmm. that I work with, you know. Because you've kind of you, did you get into it a little bit later? Yes. Like was this was it always the plan yes. to win, or how well, did you? I was really I was a very little girl when I went to see Rosalind Lenehan in. Um, in Gypsy, she's playing Mama Rose. And I remember watching her on stage and going, I want to do that. But then I fought it for years and years and years. I studied drama and theatre in Trinity, but after that I went and I, I worked in film production in London, in Soho, for years. And then I was absolutely miserable. And one day I just had this thought, go to drama school, go to Lambda. So I auditioned for oh. Lambda and I got in and I absolutely loved it. Like I had the best years of my life in Lambda. And um, but I was like 30 when I left drama school, <laughs> which is not that's ideal. Not old. Is I don't like recommend it. It is for acting because everyone yeah. was like, "Who is she? Like, how old is she? What's going on?" So, but yeah, I haven't looked back. Like, and I've done like I've, I've done a lot of theatre, which yeah. I'm proud of, and and now more stage, I mean, and now more screen. I mean, and always remember Morgan Freeman. He started late. He's Morgan Freeman. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Keep him in the head. Yeah. But, but your brother Jason O'Mara. Yes. You know, <laughs> we've seen him in Life on Mars, the American version, yeah, of course. Yeah. Grey's Anatomy. I, you know, I watch his episode all. The time yeah. he's been in so many things so was obviously so was the pressure was he was doing it already yeah well actually well it was my idea first I always wanted to do it and then he was when he was about 18 he was like he he couldn't play rugby or something and he had to repeat the year and do his leaving cert again and and then um, that's when he fell in love with acting he just ended up in Hamlet or something in the school production and then he was like oh my god I want to act so I was like excuse me don't steal my thunder um, so he went ahead, did drama and theatre in Trinity, and then I followed. Yeah. But he was like this golden boy. Damn you. And I was in his shadow yeah. for years. But now, no, I'm joking. But the uh, sibling rivalry. Because <laughs> you got to act together recently as well in, in Smother 3. Well, yeah, we're both in Smother 3, which uh, it was it's the first time we've ever been in the same show together. So we had an absolute ball. We were, you know, living in the same house in La Hinge down in County Clare. And that's also a really lovely, um, you know, cast and crew. Like yeah. they're all really, real tight knit group of, of, of you know, actors and, and crew and um, really lovely, lovely people. And Dervila Kerwin, of course, is just an absolute it's dream. Um, yeah, I loved her and she was so welcoming. And, and Jason's in it too, yeah. So. And she, uh, the bull buff each other. Sure, look, you have to be in it. You have to do something together. It's nice to get to. Tell us about yeah. your new play in The Gate. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing a, it's a comedy and it's, um, it's a Druid production at The Gate Theatre and it's about four people who are queuing for the last return uh, um, of the last night of a hit show. And it's written by the brilliant Sonia Kelly. Um, and it's very, very funny. Uh, it's only about 90 minutes long. So it's quite like fast paced and audiences are just, they're just loving it. Like, uh, it's just such a joy to sort of give people entertainment and fun and a good laugh. And um, there was actually a man on, on the Saturday night. I was a bit worried about him because he, he he was kind of dying with laughter in the front row in the middle. <laughs> and he, was, he literally couldn't stop. Um, but that just gives me such pleasure to kind of, you know, give that kind Do of gift like to people. Do you like comedy? I love comedy. Really? It's, it's my idea, particularly on on stage because yeah. you have that immediate connection and just making people laugh and shocking people is just yeah it's and that favorite. meta thing of you're in a theatre watching us as we're doing a play about standing in yeah. the line to get a ticket for a theatre show <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah so it's um there's all that it's very meta it's very meta it's um, very cool yeah. it's called the last return the last that return. is currently in the gate theatre yeah. in dublin and you're going yeah. to be in the toxic 
Avenger. Well, yes. you mentioned Peter Maybe. Dinklage. Yes. That's coming out next year. Yes, what's, it is. What's yeah. that about? Peter Dinklage, yeah. Kevin Bacon, yourself? Yeah, um, Elijah Wood is in it as well. And uh, we shot that in Bulgaria during lockdown, which was all very surreal. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, it's it's about it's a remake of a 1980s splatter movie, um, and it's about a guy who falls into a, a vat of toxic waste and becomes a mutant superhero, um, and that's Peter. So that Peter's my husband, uh, and um, I'm Shelley, his his wife. His wife. So, yeah, all my bits were with Peter, and he's just an amazing. So the actor. middle of lockdown, toxic superhero. It just made sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was so delighted to kind of get out of here, but it was weird because I was on, like I was flying to like Fra Frankfurt and then Bulgaria, and it it was just empty. The plane was yeah. empty and it was just bizarre. Oh, isn't it great mm. to see kind of theatres, everything back, yeah, all rammed back. again. Yeah, so it's yeah, so live exciting. arts, you know. Um, listen, best of luck with the, the last return as well. It's absolutely flying. Uh, Rebecca yeah, O'Mara, thank, thank you. you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for us. having me. Great to have you with us. Thank Lovely you. to see you, Rebecca. Thanks, thanks. so much. Uh, that is currently in the Gate Theatre and tickets are on sale now. Coming up, we're taking a leaf, leaf out of Hayley Bieber oh, and have. Rosie Huntington Whiteley's oh, book. I'm interested. Plus, the skin <laughs> is here and she's going to answer all your questions, skincare, whatever you want, send them in 0896 111 See you after the short break. Mention a blonde. Now, finding the right fit can be tricky, but with Silas, Sarah, Rick, our tailoring tips this morning, we're going to be a whole lot wiser. Oh, tailoring no, tips. Tailoring tips. Tailoring tips. Yes, well, tailoring and suiting are big trends for autumn, winter 22. And, you know, they've been around for a while, but it's certainly, I think people are looking to add some polish to their wardrobe now. So whether it be adding like a tailored blazer to your day-to-day -day look or going for a full suit, maybe go for a pop colour, maybe go for a bit of yeah. texture. I've got a few few nice looks today. Let's it, because you've got the big hitters for this first look. We've got, uh, stop, we've got picture inspo for you for this first look today. Yeah, so the Queen... Uh, Rosie Huntington Whiteley, the yeah. Queen of Cool. She loves an oversized blazer, um, as does Hayley Bieber and Nina Bing. They're all big fans of, you know, wearing blazers with every look. Like, look, she just looks so cool. She actually does look absolutely amazing. amazing. I look at her on Pinterest all the time going, yeah. oh my there's, God. There's Hayley rocking a quite a, a kind of an accentuated style of blazer there as well, which is really nice. Okay, and then I the mean, world's I mean. mother is buying a Nina Bing because Nina, you know, she wears her own designs exactly. and off she goes. Yeah, yeah, she's the queen of the blazer. So today, uh, Danny is wearing this beautiful blazer by style by that's you know, slightly oversized, but I think the key with this is... Is this slightly oversized? Yeah, it is. And it, the thing is, if you keep the sleeves neat, that it won't add too much bulk, yeah. you know? So if, if the midsection is quite big, then by keeping your sleeves neat, you're gonna, you know, not swamp yourself. Beautifully it is done. Gorgeous. And that herringbone, it's just so timeless, classic, mm. goes over everything. We have a gra for this kind of blazer. Yeah, we love them. Best and thing ever. But with the knit, with yes. because there's plenty of room for a knit underneath it, yes, which is what you yeah, need. Yeah, exactly. So I would obviously team this with a t-shirt for during the summer and it probably would appear to be more oversized then. But with the knit, you're adding a, um, a little bit more fabric. So uh, yeah, the fit's really nice. And then I went for a tailored leather trouser. Yes. Because mm. with their leather trousers are everywhere, but the cropped are huge this Exactly, year. but also having a tailored fit, not going for just a skinny leather, you know, just trying to, to think of different ways to wear leather trousers. Mm. Because yeah. now we've come to a point where actually it's it's really accepted to wear like a leather skinny. So yeah, now let's look at maybe having them a bit more tailored. Is that yep. a suede bag? It is a Beautiful suede bag. Beautiful suede yeah. bag. Just really easy, clean lines. Yeah, gorgeous. Stunning. And, the whole uh, thing is very clean lines. It is. And I love the loafers <laughs> with it. First. Yeah, the loafers, the paint and loafers from Selected Femme, they are stunning, so easy to wear. They give you a bit of height without having to wear a heel because I know, I was talking to Jennifer earlier, we're a bit reluctant to get back into heels, some people, so this is a nice way to incorporate yeah. a bit of height. Although that's very funky and of the leather, you'd still wear that to work. Absolutely, Easily. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we yeah. were talking about hybrid workwear last time, yeah. Alan, so that's another mm. one for your hybrid workwear. That is it. Now we're going to be going, uh, we're going fabrics with these looks here. You've got some, uh, yeah, is that so Gucci? Gucci um, showed a lot of checks. Obviously, checks are always synonymous with the cooler months. Um, and 
I just love the way they were worn this season. And then that's a lovely layered look from Ralph Lauren, um, also known for doing checks. And the tie, the shirt and tie is a really big trend. Ties for women. are back for women, yeah. yeah. It's that kind of gender fluidity, I suppose. Um, but this look is all from Divine Boutique. And I love this. It's a bit of a nod to the 40s with that check, but also having the belted waist. So if you're not mad about going oversized and kind of sloppy, yeah. this is a lovely way. You can cinch in your now, figure. Is that an embellishment on, on it? You yeah, had? No, yeah, that yeah. That's a beautiful um, embellished kind of brooch on the piece, which is just so fabulous on the lapel. And then she's actually wearing earrings that tie in nicely um, with oh, the nice. brooch too. So they're Aria V from Divine and they're just like a beautiful rhinestone. Beautiful. The polo neck is always going to be around. Look, that's a way is to that a polo make or a more turtle? contemporary. What's the difference? I'd say polo turtle, I think doesn't have a fold. Oh, thank you. Yeah, up. you're right. Yep, that's it, that's it. Um, yeah, so that is a turtleneck underneath, which, is, yeah, it just makes it a bit more contemporary. And then the crossbody bag, again, this is one that you can change the strap, which is super handy. Oh, right. Yeah, so it comes with like a fabric strap as well as a leather strap. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, and everyone loves a crossbody. Super yeah. Super handy, yeah. I mean. And then these are just a wide leg, like jersey, um, trouser, really affordable, really easy to wear. Again, this is a little bit soft tailoring, I suppose mm. we'd call this, because it is is that bit more comfortable you're not feeling restricted in you know tight tailored trousers and um yeah i think it's a lovely look it's the wide leg again so it's a bit more contemporary that's a great look absolutely mm. love it uh that brooch is really that embellishment yeah, is really nice on it great way to do it okay we're moving on to look three and we are going you're wearing it pink. Pink. <laughs> this is it yes so valentino it's pink big this showed season. 81 looks of pure pink yeah so look if valentino's doing it you know it's going to be a trend we've seen celebrities so like his whole Daya. show was just pink all pink all the same exact same shade of pink yeah. Which was Just really a different striking. Type of outfits. Yes, yes, really, really striking. So they're calling it Barbie Core. Barbie Core, oh yeah, God. because the Barbie movie that's coming out. Yeah, I'm not saying it's infiltrated my life in any way, but <laughs> I wonder, yeah. Sarah. I wonder if you've really. This is the trend you've jumped on today. You've brought us in a gorgeous yeah. look here. So, oh, it's also trickled down to street style as well, as we can see. Which yeah, is, yeah, amazing. Uh, so Haiza is wearing this head to toe pink number because I had to. Uh, it's the suit version of the trousers that I'm wearing myself. So I suppose I just wanted to show two ways to wear and um, a little bit more casual with the knit as I'm wearing or you could go for a more glam look with that crepe fuchsia pink blouse and that it's such a beautiful shape it's a woven fabric as well so it's mm. a bit of structure to it you know it's not as oversized or sloppy um, and I think this would be amazing for an event do you think it is it not too pink I've got one the exact no same color thing. that I wear all the time yeah but do you not wear then a white shirt a white um oh a white shirt you wear the whole pink I'd wear everything all the pink. Yeah. yeah including the pink shoes and everything yeah i think that looks amazing it's certainly impactful color. i mean there are different ways to wear of course you could do a cream you know or even a black with it but i just thought in keeping with yeah. this massive trend that we'd show head to toe pink today the only reason i don't wear pink with this because i can't find a pink top to go with it there you go the one Fenish. thing with oh, this there's a pink top there. <laughs> that, there we go the one the one thing with this is that of course the blazer will be worn separately. Yes. You wear it with jeans, you yes. wear it with black, oh, yeah, you wear it whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. And then you wear the trousers separately as well. So it's kind of versatile. Yeah, I do yeah. love the whole look. And then those, these are the, the pennies version of the match and match. Yeah, the River Island ones before. Yeah. These are only 21 euro They're and they are looking. a stunning shade of pink. 21 euro, that's <laughs> yeah, mad. Yeah, they look incredible. so expensive, don't they? Yeah, because the match match ones are what? It's out over at the Grand? It's not even they look funny money. They look amazing. And then the it? little clutch bag uh, from Mango as well. Beautiful, mm. that is gorgeous. We're going to move on to our final look today and that is with Danny. And Danny's, who do we have? Look, what are, who's our inspiration here? Danny's back. So last week we saw Gigi Hadid at the WWE. Is this like Velvet? with suits. Honours, yes. My favourite thing about the festive season, I'm allowed to mention it because it's the 1st of November. Um, <laughs> yeah, Halloween is over, we yeah, can now yeah. mention the festive season. <laughs> Jingle bells. Um, yeah, she wore an amazing velvet suit and then obviously the velvet blazer is synonymous with Kate Moss and, you That's know. That's the reason I bought one. Yeah, if yeah, it's all good. And then I love how Dakota Johnson is wearing this velvet suit with the tie and the shirt. shirt Again, tie. as I was saying, it's a, the shirt a, a tie trend. Big it's quite okay. cool, isn't it? This is gorgeous. Yeah, so this is this is my version of how I would wear the velvet suit, obviously on a night out. So we've got those amazing long rhinestone earrings, the sequined uh, vest underneath. And then it's this is a little bit more of a boxy fit. It's a longer line. If you saw Gigi Hadid's one was really long. It was, yeah. You could almost wear it as a dress. Yeah. Um, this, is the, this has a bit of length 
length to it as well. So it's a little bit more contemporary. Well, with that, I've, well, I'd be wearing that with every sort of dress, every sort of thing that I had. I'd be wearing that a with slip loads skirt, of things. Yes. Slip dress, belted over a t-shirt with slip skirt, yeah. amazing. Um, I actually have another image there of just like, you know, jeans and a white tee and your crossbody bag all day, every day. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. But with them all looking really well together, like you'd wear it's it to so many the bag ways. is gorgeous with it the as well. The bag is a little, little H&M bag. number. Yeah, only 19.99. And then these incredible jewel shoes, which are from Niles and Rafe, which I think are so beautiful. They're a lovely heel height, really comfortable, just a really well-made shoe. It's a gorgeous look, actually. It, it really is. Danny, you know what I'm going to say. You need that in your life. Every time she, she comes knows. out, every time <laughs> she comes out here, I'm like, Danny, stop wearing such gorgeous things. That is lovely. On you, she Danny, told me really. I'm dangerous for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, oh, she was at your fashion show recently yeah, as yeah. well. She's spending all the money that she's meant to be making. Uh, so those looks are from all over yeah. the place in Style By as well. You can see them all. There. Yes, and I'm on Instagram on Style By Sarah Rickard. Sarah thank Rickard, you. thank you so much for the inspiration this morning. Looking gorgeous, Danny. Thank you so much. Cheers. Uh, um, you know where Mirren's going now to buy that pink blouse. That's fun. Oh, that suit's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it's break time now. The Skin Nerd answers your skin related questions. That's coming up just after the break, right here in Ireland AM. Welcome back. Now, we got some great advice earlier on about keeping our skin hydrated this winter as Alan gives the biggest yawn I've ever seen in my entire life. Could you hear that? He was like, oh. His skin is just wonderful. He doesn't even care about <laughs> he this. Was, he was de-tightening, yeah. So Jennifer Rocca is back with us. And you know what, Jennifer, we have a load of questions to yes. get through, so let's not hang around. Heather sent in a message saying she is super sensitive Combination skin, don't know what that is. I have an oily T zone and dry <laughs> cheeks. What can you recommend? Well, I start with your question no, or no, you Heather's just, question. Heather, I think, is more important than me. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'd say about sensitive skin is to try to understand is it sensitive or what we might call a sensitized. So, sensitive skin is when you're born with it, it's, it's since you're yay high, you'll always have had irritations. Sensitized is circumstantial, so it's environmental, so through perhaps over exfoliating or misusing products or a diet and lifestyle. So, the reason why you'd want to figure out which it is, it'll help you to decipher how to treat it. But by and large, when you have sensitive skin, you're really trying to look after the barrier of the skin, particularly this time of the year. So SPF is still really important. Yeah. I know I'm sitting here on November 1st. Tommy, don't give me those eyebrows. I ain't got time for that. SPF. SPF. In Ireland, ever. Because the, the light that... Yeah, okay. <laughs> he's like, I know, you've said it to me a thousand times. But SPF is important. Barriers, so ceramides and glycerine is really important to this time of the year for all skins, but particularly someone who's sensitive or sensitized. So it essentially just allows the natural layer of the skin to feel like it should, to yeah. be the barrier it should. And then if, because she said she has oily T-zone and dry cheeks, what's a really interesting ingredient that maybe isn't as known yet as some others is azelaic acid. So azelaic is a really powerful, it's a really powerful ingredient, but not irritating. It's an acid that helps with redness and oiliness. But because she's sensitive, I'd be wary of ingredients I typically recommend, which would be salicylic acid. So in essence, usually for oily skin, I'd say salicylic acid for this particular person because she's sensitive, azelaic. Okay, azelaic acid. We hope that that has helped yes. uh, Heather in some way. Maeve is, she says, I'm seven weeks pregnant and looking for pure pregnancy safe hydration products. Any recommendations? First of all, congratulations. And I hope yeah. you're feeling okay mm. because first few weeks are definitely difficult at times. The one piece that I find interesting about my sector, i.e. the skin skincare world is that a lot of products don't educate you as to when you can or can't use them. And so that's where I suppose from all of the products we try to recommend and endorse, we try to say, can you use it if you're pregnant or not pregnant, who's allergic to it, who can't use it. So definitely look up many a website, they should have that information. By and large, the two things I'd say to Maeve not to use at this moment in time to err on the side of caution is salicylic acid and vitamin A. And by and large, everything else should be safe. But if she's ever unsure, seek counsel from the GP or the pharmacist. Okay, okay. Good so for advice. hydration. Do you think for that though, you know the sprays, the, the hydration spritz, sprays, yeah. the spritz from Yonka you showed earlier on, they're good to keep hydration going and they're they're pregnancy safe. 100%, yeah. and Yonka in general is a, is a brand that I feel just suits all. Okay. And it's got like that kind of, you're minding yourself, you mightn't feel too well, you're excited, you're not telling people news, you want to kind of TLC. Yeah, that, that honestly just happens That's to be the case with that Yonka kit earlier would be a great one. Okay, we have a guy. We have a guy. Derek, we have actually two Tommy, guys. Tommy, do you know that men have skin too? Uh, it's shocking. I best know. cleansers, exfoliating products for miliocysts. Yes. So Derek, great. First of all, generally do love that you're asking the questions. So best cleansers or exfoliating products. So essentially, regardless of gender, whatever gender what identify as, 
a cleanse every single day, morning and evening. Milia are essentially little white plugs of oil that get trapped under the skin. You typically find them around the eye area, um, anywhere that's kind of thin and delicate. And if they do need, a cyst is medical. So I, first of all, sorry, I should start at the beginning. Because it's a cyst, seek medical attention. If it's typically just milia, which are those little white pearls. I used to have those. Then no matter how you did, no matter, <laughs> we'll talk about them openly and publicly. <laughs> yeah. um, but the reality with milia is that you need to go to a clinic and it's the most satisfying treatment to do as a facialist. So you get a little current, you place it in, it's all done hygienically and safely. A little bit of current and it just blanches and then the oil is dissipated underneath the skin. And it doesn't mean, <laughs> Tommy, you look delighted. Uh. It doesn't have any scarring and that's the problem. When we go at our skin at home, albeit it feels great, we do tend to leave and have repercussions thereafter. Very good. But for Love Derek, it. cleanse every day. Yes, do okay. go to um, a, a local clinic for the milia cyst and in general, keep cleansing. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, Caroline, can you recommend any affordable products for rosacea and large pores on the face? First thing I'd say about rosacea is, again, similar to the milia cyst, and this is where skincare blurs between aesthetic and medical. So rosacea is a medical condition. It does need to be diagnosed. Unfortunately, the power of Google is, has pros and cons, so people tend to self-diagnose. So to be sure it's rosacea, I'd... I'd go to my doctor and make sure that it is. If it is, they'll recommend medication and topical products alongside. If it's not, there's an amazing brand, Citrine Healthcare. I've had it on here before. It's um, The product is called Rosatrine. It's designed by medics. It's for rosacea and redness and inflamed skin. And it's, it's honestly, there's a guy that works for us that has been using skincare for years and the results of his skin with that is insane. Okay, Brilliant. very good, very good. Oh, come on, I'll go to the other guy as well. Yep. Uh, Adam, I have really dark rings under my eyes. So this, just, I swear this is Adam. This is for us. Um, <laughs> is it really from lack of sleep or are some people just prone to it? Any trips, tips on how to treat dark circles? Dark circles are a tough one. They definitely are because they can be genetic, they can be lifestyle. So it is trying to figure out, did you have them when you're little? Is it in your, like, do you see it in family around you? Um, but by and large, SPF, shock horror. Vitamin A is going to help to plump the skin also. And products that we spoke about earlier that have like iridescent, and particles. Now, I don't mean you're going to look like you have any kind of makeup or product on, mm. but just to give that reflective element without going down the makeup road will definitely help. Caffeine is great for restricting dark circles temporarily, but albeit gives you a pep in your step. And it's for some men, you'd love them to know you can use colour corrector. Like it's not makeup. Yeah. And I would just like to say to Adam, you know, look at the colour wheel and diagnose and, and a yellow just a tiny little colour corrector. Yeah. Good and man, you could Adam. feel a little bit better under there. And more alert and alive. As always, we can't get to just all of the questions you've been sent in. Tiny bit, tiny bit of colour corrector. I'll bring you in some tomorrow. A little bit of colour um, corrector is great. Just quick one though, about you were saying that that guy go to a clinic. So what do you mean go to a clinic? What's a clinic? Where so would you go? A, your local salon or a facial salon, clinic. No, and particularly okay. in cities, you will have a lot of, like if you type in facial clinic and nurse-led clinic, you'll find an awful oh, lot of them around the country. Chef cool. Rock, thank you. The thank skin you. Nerd. Thank skin you nerd. so much for that. Fantastic. Find and her thank on you Instagram. for all your text messages. Yes. Now, tomorrow we have a great show lined up because uh, Fair City stalwart McLean Burke will be joining us to chat about his upcoming panto and we'll be getting a history lesson of the GAA and Catherine Layden's in the kitchen. All that and lots GAA. more. You oh, love there it. we go. You love Leaving it. In your See you tomorrow. From have Saturday. a great day. Bye. Bye.